Like the modern-day wolves from which it takes its name, Lysenops had a long and slender skull, with a set of dog-like fangs set into both its upper and lower jaws. These pointed canine teeth were ideal for the use of stabbing and or tearing at the flesh of any large prey that it came upon. Lysenops most likely hunted small vertebrates such as reptiles and dicinodonts. They walked and ran with its long legs held close to its body. This is a feature found in mammals, but not in more primitive amniotes, early reptiles, and synapsids such as pelicosaurs, whose legs are positioned to the sides of their bodies. The ability to move like a mammal would have given Lysenops an advantage over other land vertebrates, since it would have been able to outrun them. Gorgonopsia, an extinct group of saber-toothed therapsids, lived during the middle to upper Permian period, approximately 265 to 252 million years ago. They had long, narrow skulls and elongated canine teeth used for hunting, likely employing a bite-and-retreat tactic. Over time, Gorgonopsians grew significantly in size, with later species like Rubigini becoming particularly robust and powerful. These creatures were fully terrestrial, walking with a semi-erect gait, and maintained high body temperatures despite possibly lacking sweat glands or fur. As apex predators following the Capitanian mass extinction, they were primarily found in regions like the Karoo supergroup and western Russia. Gorgonopsians displayed binocular vision, a keen sense of smell, and possibly a rudimentary eardrum, and their classification has undergone several taxonomic revisions since their discovery in the late 19th century. Smilesaurus was a predatory synapsid distantly related to modern mammals. Living in South Africa during the late Permian, around 259 to 254 million years ago, Smilesaurus was comparable to a medium-sized dog at around 1 meter long. It had some of the longest saber-like canine teeth of any known Gorgonopsian, proportionally comparable to those of saber-toothed cats, and it may have hunted in a similar manner, using powerful grasping limbs to pin down struggling prey and then dispatching it with slashing bites. Unlike eutheriodonts, but like some ectothermic creatures today, all Gorgonopsians possessed a pineal eye on the top of the head, which is used to detect daylight and thus, the optimal temperature to be active. It is possible that other theriodonts lost this due to the evolution of either endothermy, intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells in the eyes, in tandem with the loss of color vision and a shift to nocturnal life, or both. Nocturnal behavior has long been assumed to have originated in mammals, but the large orbit size and presence of sclerotic rings in many early synapsids, stretching as far back as the Carboniferous, would suggest that the ability to venture out in low-light conditions evolved much earlier. A major anatomical shift occurred between earlier pelicosaurs and therapsids, which is postulated to have been related to an increasing metabolism and the origins of homeothermy, maintenance of a high body temperature. The evolution of a secondary palate, and the separation of the mouth from the nasal cavity, may have increased ventilation efficiency associated with high levels of aerobic activity. Gorgonopsians did not have a bony secondary palate, but possibly had one of soft tissue. Nonetheless, the secondary palate could have instead aided in eating large quantities of food at once rather than in ventilation. Dinogorgon was one of the largest species of Rubigini, with the skull length of nearly 40 centimeters, almost as large as Rubigia had. It was a formidable predator, and likely preyed on reptiles and smaller therapsids. Like more derived Rubigines, Dinogorgon had a number of bosses on its skull, likely to reduce the stresses caused by struggling prey. Its snout was deep but narrow, similar to Elurognathus but narrower than Rubigia and Clelandina. It had four to five upper and lower post-canine teeth, which further distinguishes it from Rubigia. The generic name Dinogorgon is derived from Greek, meaning, terrible gorgon, while its species name Rubigii is taken from the surname of renowned Karu paleontologist, Professor Bruce Rubidge, who has contributed to much of the research conducted on therapsids of the Karu basin. 
Clelandina has an extraordinarily small sclerotic ring relative to the size of its orbit, which implies that it was diurnal. It is the only rubigine with a preserved sclerotic ring, so it is unknown whether this trait was shared by other members of the subfamily. Like all rubigines, it was relatively large, with a skull up to 36 cm long. It had reduced dentition, with the teeth posterior to the canines being absent and replaced with a bony ridge. The skull has heavily pachyostosed, with massive rugose bosses. Rubigia was the largest African Gorgonopsian and one of the largest Gorgonopsians known to have lived. The largest specimens had skulls that measure up to 46 cm in length. Rubigia was a heavily built, large-bodied apex predator, and sported a thick skull with long, saber-like canines. Numerous therapsid species, including Rubigini gorgonopsids, are used as biostratigraphic markers in other African basins, such as the Upper Majamabisa mudstone formation of Zambia, and the Chiweta beds of Malawi. Rubigia fossils have been recovered from the Yusulai formation of Tanzania, indicating biostratigraphic correlation with Upper Permian Age deposits in South Africa. No Rubigini fossils have been found outside of African deposits to date, although the Inostranseveni are considered to be their Russian counterparts. The elongated canines have generally been thought to have been instrumental in their hunting tactics. The Gorgonopsian jaw hinge was double-jointed and made up of somewhat mobile and rotatable bones, which would have allowed them to open their mouths incredibly wide, perhaps in excess of 90 degrees, without having to unhinge the jaw. It has alternatively been suggested that sabers evolved primarily due to sexual selection as a form of mating display. This is exhibited in some modern deer species, but is difficult to test given the lack of living saber-toothed synapsid predators. In saber-toothed cats, long-sabered taxa are thought to have been pursuit hunters, whereas short-toothed taxa are thought to have been ambush predators. One of the most recognizable characteristics of Inostrancevia is the presence of long, saber-like canines on the upper and lower jaws. How these animals would have used this dentition is debated. The bite force of saber-toothed predators, using three-dimensional analysis, was determined by Stefan Laudenschlager and colleagues in 2020, their findings detailed that, despite morphological convergence among saber-toothed predators, there is a range of methods of possible killing techniques. The similarly sized Rubigia is capable of producing a bite force of 715 newtons. Although lacking the necessary jaw strength to crush bone, the analysis found that even the most massive Gorgonopsians possessed a more powerful bite than other saber-toothed predators. The study also indicated that the jaw of Inostrancevia was capable of a massive gape, perhaps enabling it to deliver a lethal bite, and in a fashion similar to the hypothesized killing technique of Smilodon. It is presumed that Moscarinus was a cat-like predator, being able to pierce skin and hold on to struggling prey with its long canines. This is the first record of this kind of hunting technique. Given its sturdily designed, thick snout, enormous canines, and powerful jaw muscles, it appears to have been a daunting predator. Moscarinus was a large carnivore, reaching 1.5 meters in total body length. The skull is similar to that of the Gorgonopsids, with large temporal fenestri and a convexly bowed palate. The skull ranged in size to comparable to a monitor lizard, to those of a lion. They possess a characteristically short, broad snout. Pristerognathus was a medium-sized therocephalian with a 25 cm skull and a total length up to 1.5 meters. These animals were roughly dog-sized, and are characterized by long, narrow skulls with large canines. They are likely to have lived in woodlands, and preyed on smaller therapsids and milleretids of the time. 
several more specialized lifestyles have been suggested for some therocephalians. Many small forms, like ictodosuchids, have been interpreted as aquatic animals. Evidence for aquatic lifestyles includes sclerotic rings that may have stabilized the eye under the pressure of water and strongly developed cranial joints, which may have supported the skull when consuming large fish and aquatic invertebrates. Living in South Africa during the late Permian, Coerosaurus synapsid was only about 35 cm long but sported some large bulging bony bosses on the sides of both its snout and lower jaw. The bosses would have been covered by tough skin in life, similar to modern giraffid ossicones. A study of its skull found that its head was rather delicately built, and the bosses were relatively fragile and lacked the sort of reinforcement needed to resist impacts, suggesting that these structures weren't used as weapons for fighting each other but were probably more for display, so they may even have been brightly colored. The upper jaw bosses were also well supplied with nerves and blood vessels, and would have been quite sensitive to touch. Therocephalians were close relatives of cynodonts, and convergently evolved several very mammal-like anatomical features in their skulls, teeth, and limbs. But unlike their cousins this lineage never fully recovered in the Triassic, and they ultimately disappeared completely around 242 million years ago. Ericiola cerda parva was one of these short-lived Mesozoic therocephalians, it was a fairly small animal with small sharp teeth that indicated mainly fed on insects, and semi-opposable thumbs and inner toes that suggest it was also a capable climber. Holes in the bones of its snout would have carried numerous nerves and blood vessels, which may be evidence of sensitive fleshy lips and possibly whiskers. And while there's no direct evidence of fur in therocephalians, they do appear to have been active warm-blooded animals, and possible fossilized synapsid hair from the Permian period suggests fuzziness might have been ancestral to all of the protomammal lineages that survived into the Triassic. Prosinosuchus, a synapsid from the late Permian. Measuring about 60 centimeters long, it was one of the earliest members of the cynodonts, the lineage that would eventually lead to mammals. Its fossils are mostly known from southern Africa, but similar remains have also been found in Europe and Russia, suggesting it was actually quite widespread across the supercontinent of Pangaea that existed at the time. It had a long vertically flattened tail, strong leg muscles, and paddle-like feet, all adaptations that suggest it was a semi-aquatic otter-like animal capable of agile swimming. It also had forward-facing eyes, giving it good binocular vision and depth perception while pursuing fish underwater. Cynodontia is a clade of Eutheriodontherapsids that first appeared in the late Permian, and extensively diversified after the Permian, Triassic extinction event. Mammals are cynodonts, as are their extinct ancestors and close relatives, having evolved from advanced Probanignathian cynodonts during the late Triassic. Non-mammalian cynodonts occupied a variety of ecological niches, both as carnivores and as herbivores. Following the emergence of mammals, most other cynodont lines went extinct. Carasognathus was a quadrupedal predator. It was named for a notch on its coronoid process which most likely was the insertion point for a chewing muscle, the adductor mandibuli externus. It was a small animal, with a skull only 5 cm in length. Since its body has not been discovered, its full length remains unknown, but estimates have been made at 50 cm. Carasognathus has a snout that makes up slightly less than half of the total length of its skull and a long facial process on its septomaxilla. Other than these two features its skull is that of a typical cynodont. The odd shape of its septomaxilla is more typical of therocephalians than other cynodonts indicating that it may be close to a common ancestor between the two groups. During cynodont locomotion, the axial skeleton is unlikely to have flexed and extended in the sagittal plane as it does in mammals. Instead, cynodonts are believed to have moved by lateral undulation, the typical axial movement of reptiles. The imbricating coastal plates in cynodonts may be analogous to the expanded ribs in certain edentates, 
which may represent musculoskeletal adaptation to adopt a more characteristically mammalian posture by lifting the trunk off the ground. Cynodonts are also believed to have had propulsive movements in the humerus, which are typical in mammal locomotion. The presence of both reptile and mammal features in cynodont locomotion is indicative of a transition between the two classes. Thrinaxodon is categorized into four ontogenetic stages based on nine cranial features, showing mostly isometric skull growth with notable exceptions such as the optic region. Rapid bone growth occurred during juvenile stages, slowing significantly in adulthood, indicating early attainment of peak size. Thrinaxodon's posture represents a transition between the sprawling gait of pelicosaurs and the more upright stance of mammals, with a unique ability to assume an upright posture in burrows. The segmented vertebral column, including thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, suggests potential for a diaphragm, although this remains speculative without soft tissue evidence. Thrinaxodon was a burrowing cynodont, evidenced by fossils found in preserved burrow hollows, indicating it built its own burrows rather than inhabiting those of other creatures. The segmented ribcage likely contributed to greater flexibility and the ability to rest in small burrows, possibly leading to behaviors like estivation or torpor. The earliest burrowing Thrinaxodon dates to around 251 million years ago, near the Permian-Triassic extinction event. A notable fossil found in a Thrinaxodon burrow included an injured temnospondyl, Brumastega, suggesting rare interspecific shelter sharing.